Hello, this time I will show you how to create very basic lightning texture. Um, so we're going to start in Substance Designer and as usual we're going to start with a simple shape uh, which will be the line in this case. Um, we're just going to alter it a little bit, try to maybe add a little bit of stylization to it. Um, a little bit blur basically so we can get like a nice glow around it in the uh, game engine. And we're going to create one of those two uh, textures. Obviously they probably won't be the same as you can see on this um, images, but I'm going to go through exactly the same process. And as the process is procedural, you're probably going to get a little bit different results. But my hope is that I'm going to um, give you a small tutorial and maybe a little bit better understanding on um, how to create those sort of textures. So basically you can use that knowledge and um, apply it to uh, your project or whatever you're working on and um, hopefully it's going to improve a little bit of your texturing skills or even get you started of, on creating textures in uh, Substance Designer. So as usual before I um, create a tutorial I actually um, trying to find out if those textures are useful. So I've created a small scene in um, Unreal Engine and I've created um, some geometry as well for the texture. So those are like cross sections uh, and uh, planes as well, but with a little bit altered uh, geometry. Um, all the UVs are very simple. They just fit into the square. And I've created a um, small particle system, which I'm going to show you in a second. But I just want to show you how the mesh basically look like. Uh, looks like with this texture and um, as you can see the texture is uh, tiling a bit um, vertically and with those I've created uh, this particle system obviously there are some uh, material tricks and so this is done in Niagara uh, but yeah basically I managed to create something like this with uh, those textures Okay, so let's start by jumping into Substance Design. Okay, so let's start with uh, Shape Node. Um, let's scale it down to be something like this. Basically like a stripe or line. And maybe let's unlock the node so we can tweak its resolution. Basically what we want, we want this to be uh, 1024 wide and 512 height um, next let's use transform now let me zoom in a bit and in transform let's just grab the sides basically and, and we can do it that way although the better way would be to stretch it to 100 percent here Next, let's maybe try to adjust its shape a bit using warp and maybe use cells to do that because what we want, we want the, those big shapes to um, alter just a few of the, in a few places. Ten. What are we looking for? We're looking for very thin line, something like this, basically. So we can use edge detect next. And have something like this, basically. And we want to invert it as well. And as you can see, we're kind of getting somewhere, I think. Um, let's try another warp. Um, let's maybe copy and paste cells, but maybe let's drag it um, through blur because we want those shapes to be now a little bit softer. Mm, let's try it with 30. See what that's going to give us. Uh, not much. Maybe let's just increase the scale of it. And obviously lower the intensity. So what we're looking for we just we're just trying to alter those 
um, shape so we can have something a bit more stylized so we, we could have like a this round uh, round surface here and then it goes into the spike here the same in, in this place then you know let's try tweaking the scale and see what else we could basically achieve with this Mm, so I quite like this, so let's maybe stick with this for now. Obviously we can go back to the warp as well and just you know, keep tweaking this until we're happy with the shape. So I quite like this, so I have like a very thick line here and a very thin line here. I mean, it looks a little bit stylized, um, but let me just keep tweaking. Maybe I'll come up with something better. Just changing this order and just looking for a slightly better shape. Okay, I'm gonna drag it through another warp. This time, let's maybe try parallel noise. to do now I'm just trying to alter uh, the shape a little bit vertically so I need a very blurry shape because I want the movement to be very um, soft So maybe something like this. I think this could work. Uh, let's maybe try edge detect and see if we could get better shape. Probably not, so maybe st uh, stick with warp. What we are missing is those uh, sharp edges, so maybe let's try another warp and another cells and see if we could get back those uh, sharp edges. I'm gonna reduce the blur. and change its scale. Okay, so I've got something like this. Let me list. Let's tweak a few parameters in our previous notes to see if uh, we can actually get different results.
and quite like this although I think there's a mm, too much frequency in the noise here because I'm, I'm trying to get those straight lines and so I'm going to reduce the scale of uh, this node cells quite like this shape and I think it actually could work as a uh, lightning uh, so there's a lot of as you can see there's a lot of back and forth basically and because you kind of need to experiment with those nodes and try to find something that um, actually you, li you like in terms of your taste and the look of it in general so uh, feel free to experiment with those nodes and you know move and those sliders until you will be happy with the with the shapes but uh, yeah basically i've got something like this so i'm hoping you get similar results but let's go further let's maybe try uh, bevel because what we'll be looking for we'll be looking for um this blurriness um, outside because when we're gonna bring the texture into the um, into the game engine we we want those blurry edges there as well uh, let's try distance note as well it's gonna alter our shape a bit so the distance note uh, i'm gonna invert it so maybe let's try to invert it before i'm gonna plug it into the distance note and histogram scan So let's invert it before we'll plug it into the um, histogram scan. Oh, let's try to bevel this node instead. Because what we want to do, we want to blend those two together. So as you can see, we've got a very hard shape here and we're just blending it um, with our bevel. So we can have like a slight uh, blur around it. That's going to create like a halo effect. As you can see here, those edges are very jaggy. So maybe let's try to run it through um, the blur blur node. So we can get slightly better results for this. And then let's run it through transform. And as you can see, it is tileable. I usually color those in the engine, so all I need is just a grade scale. But if you want to color it, I think a, a gradient map might be a good idea. So let me grab, uh, grab gradient map, run it through. I'm going to open gradient editor and I'm just going to click here and let me try again Uh, 
and we get something like this. And as you can see, you can basically export it, apply it to your mesh, or maybe find a different use for it. And then the one I showed you in the uh, in the game engine. Um, but yeah, basically this is my process of creating a very simple uh, lightning texture, which I probably um, want to alter later on and create a bit more interesting shapes or even a movement in Photoshop. Um, but in terms of, you know, getting um, that kind of texture uh, straight from Substance Designer, uh, basically that's the process. So as you can see, it's a very um, small uh, graph. Uh, but it gives you something that you can basically start with okay so i hope you enjoyed it and um, yeah see you in the next tutorial um, let me know if you would like to know how i've created those meshes because i assume that everyone knows that you know you can go into um, any 3d software and just create those however i created those in houdini and um, i managed to get like a as you can see here eight variations with very quickly just moving the slider in the procedural procedural way as well and so if you'd like to learn how to do those just let me know and i will uh, drop a tutorial which should be very very short but again it might be something that you actually have no interest in um, so let me know in the comments um, all right so thanks everyone thanks for watching uh, if you could share that video that'll be great and um, hopefully I'm going to create a few more tutorials in Substance Designer to um, give us a better idea how to create uh, various textures using the procedural way in Substance Designer. And don't get me wrong, those textures are very, very simple. And uh, yeah, my hope is that we're just going to create uh, a bit more complex ones later on. The idea is to start very simple and then we can expand on it. Okay. So yeah, again, thanks everyone.